can hardly see any nature ninos out there. It's a beautiful summer day and I suspect you are outside playing. That's what I think. But maybe you'll catch this story later. It is going to be a wonderful story. And it is Miss Sally's favorite story about trees, probably. At least one of them. Let's say trees and people. This is my favorite story. It is called Planting the Trees of Kenya. And Kenya is a country very far away in Africa. And it is the story of a woman, here she is as a girl, called Wangari Maathai. Her last name is a little hard to say. Wangari Maathai. And she's no longer alive, but she is a famous Kenyan woman who is known for planting so many trees in Kenya. And she won something called a Nobel Peace Prize for her work. And part of the reason why I love this story is because very, very long ago, very long ago, I lived in Kenya for three whole years. I lived and I taught in Kenya for three whole years. So I know the country a little bit and I know about this woman. So this is today's story. And without further ado, we are going to learn a few signs for the week related to this story, as we always do, right? So we are going to start Sorry, sometimes it takes a minute for the computer to catch up to what I want it to do. Okay, so, and I'm also trying something new, Nature Ninos. This is the first time for me to record the story with my new standing up desk. My new standing up desk. So can you see how I can move around? I was always sitting before, so hopefully it will work out well. I think I'm going to take my binoculars off as I sign and read the story to you because they might get in the way. So this is a sign we've had before, and this is called an acacia tree. They're all over Kenya. We sign tree like this, or you could sign it like this for many trees or a forest. So tree, forest. Next, this is the woman called Wangari Maathai. She is a woman, just like me, a woman. So you take your thumb, like you're doing a thumbs up, and trace the side of the chin. This is the sign for girl, just like this. And it originated from way back when girls used to wear bonnets and they would have a string they would tie under their neck, much like my hat has this. But you sign woman like this, woman and then you put a five handshake on your chest. Woman, woman, woman. She is an amazing woman, you will see. What is this? It's a fish. Really easy, take your hand, fish. Like it's swimming through a river, fish. If you're really good, you can like try to make some kind of a fish face. I'm not very good at that, but you can give it a shot. Frogs. I think that frogs might be my favorite animal ever, actually. Certainly in terms of pets that I've had before, I've loved having frogs. What do frogs do? They croak, right? Ribbit, 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 ribbit. We sign frog like this. Frog, frog, frog. So these are like the two little frog legs popping out as they hop around. And under the chin, I think must have something to do with the fact that if you've ever watched a frog, you can see its throat go croak, croak, croak. So we sign frog, 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 like that. Next, we have country. Now, this word in English can mean two things. It can mean like living in the country, which is a place that is not the city and doesn't have very many buildings and usually has lots of farms and has lots of forests. 
So that kind of country, we sign like this. You take your hand and you put it on your elbow. Now again, you wouldn't hold your arm up like this. And even with my standing desk, you can't quite see me sign it. But you would just have your arms in their normal places at your sides, and you would sign country on the elbow. Another type of country is related to the countries that we live in. So for most of us that are listening with Nature Ninos, you live in the United States of America, which is a country in North America. And this is a picture of it. We have Canada to our north as another country and Mexico to our south as another country. Um, so those are two different meanings for country. Now where we live, the United States, or America, you sign it like this. Take your hands, put them together like this, and then around in a circle like this. And this sign is said to have originated from way back when, when America was first being settled by European settlers, because of course we had native people here long ago, but European settlers would set up these white picket fences that looked kind of like this. So that is where the sign for America comes from, just like this, America, America. School or college. So in the story that we're going to read, Wangari goes to college in America, even though she's from Kenya, she goes to college in America. Um, you probably don't know much about college yet because you're a nature neo but I bet you do know a little bit of something about school, school. So we sign school like this, school, school. College, same hand shape, but we go like this, college, college. School, college, school, college. Okay, finally grow. Oh, you know what I'm realizing? Oh, I made a mistake. Do you ever make a mistake? I made a mistake. My attention got distracted. It got totally distracted. My phone was being filled up with all kinds of messages and I forgot to put a picture for grow. Oh my goodness, I think that's the last one, but we sign grow like this. And in this story, Wangari grows trees. She uses seeds. And this is a sign we've done before. So you flick out your little pinky like this, seeds. And she plants them in the ground and then they grow. And I think that this is also a sign we've had before, grow. I'm so sorry. I made a mistake. See adults, even Miss Sally, I make mistakes sometimes. Okay, so those are the signs for the week as always. I invite you to listen, and when you hear the word, go ahead and sign it. And if I can, while standing up and holding the book and all of those things, I'll do it too, okay? I, we will do it together. So here we go again. The story is called Planting the Trees of Kenya, the story of Wangari Ma'akai. And it's written by somebody called Claire Nivola. Claire Nivola, Planting the Trees of Kenya. As Wangari Maathai tells it, when she was growing up on a farm in the hills of central Kenya, the earth was clothed in a dress of green. Fig trees, olive trees, crotons and flame trees covered the land and fish filled the pure waters of the streams. The fig tree was sacred then, and Wangari knew not to disturb it, not even to carry its fallen branches home for firewood. In the stream near her homestead where she went to collect water for her mother, 
she played with the glistening frog eggs, trying to gather them like beads into necklaces, though they slipped through her fingers back into the clear water. Her heart was filled with the beauty of her native Kenya when she left to attend a college, which is a type of school, run by Benedictine nuns in America, far, far, far away from her home. There she studied biology, the science of living things. It was an inspiring time for Wungari. The students in America in those years dreamed of making the world better. The nuns, too, taught Wangari to think not just for herself, but of the world beyond herself. How eagerly she returned to Kenya, how full of hope and of all that she had learned. She had been away for only five years, only five years, but they might have been 20. So much change had happened. The landscape of Kenya was totally different. Wangari found the fig tree cut down, the little stream with the frogs dried up, and no trace of frogs, tadpoles, or the silvery beads of the eggs where once there had been little farms growing here, there, and everywhere, what each family needed to live on, in large plantations growing tea for export. Now almost all the farms were growing crops to sell. Wangari noticed that the people no longer grew what they ate, but bought food from the stores. The store food was expensive and the little they could afford was not as good for them as what they had grown themselves, so that children, even grown-ups, were often weaker and even sickly. She saw that where once there had been richly wooded hills with grazing cows and goats, now the land was almost treeless, the woods gone. So many trees had been cut down to clear the way for more farms that women and children had to walk further and further and further in search of firewood to heat a pot or warm the house. Sometimes they walked for hours before they found a tree or a bush to cut down. There were fewer and fewer trees with each one they cut, and much of the land was as bare as a desert. Without trees, there were no roots to hold the soil in place. <coughs> Excuse me. Without trees, there was no shade. The rich topsoil dried to dust and the devil wind blew it away. Rain washed the loose earth into the once clear streams and rivers, dirtying them with silt. Doesn't seem like a nice place so much anymore, huh? It's kind of a sad story right now, but I'm betting it's gonna get better and happier because when Gari's going to do something, she's gonna do something. We have no clean drinking water, the women of the countryside complained. No firewood to cook with. 
Our goats and cows have nothing to graze on, so they make little milk. Our children are hungry and we are poorer than before. Wangori saw that the people who had once honored fig trees and now cut them down had forgotten to care for the land that fed them. Now the land, weak and suffering, could no longer take care of the people and their lives became harder than ever. The woman, the women, blamed others. They blamed the government, but Wangari was not one to complain. She wanted to do something. Think of what we ourselves are doing she urged the women. We are cutting down the trees of Kenya. When we see that we are part of the problem, she said, we can become part of the solution. She had a big and simple idea. I wonder, I wonder if you can guess what her idea is, considering the name of the book. Do you remember the name of the book? For those of you who can read it, I wonder if you can think of what her idea is. Hmm. I bet you can. Why not plant trees? She asked the women. She showed them how to collect the seeds from the trees that remained. She taught them to prepare the soil, mixing it with manure. She showed them how to wet that soil, press a hole in it with a stick, and carefully insert a seed. Most of all, she taught them to tend the growing seedlings as if they were babies, watering them twice a day to make sure they grew strong. Wangari, I think she had a good idea. It wasn't easy. Water was always hard to come by. Often the women had to dig a deep hole by hand and climb into it to haul heavy bucketfuls of water up over their heads and back out of the hole. An early nursery in Wangari's backyard failed. Almost all the seedlings died, but Wangari was not one to give up and she showed others how not to give up. Many of the women could not read or write. They were mothers and farmers and no one took them seriously. But they did not need schooling to plant trees. They did not have to wait for the government to help them. They could begin to change their own lives. All this was heavy work, but the women felt proud. Slowly, all around them, they could begin to see the fruit of the work of their own hands. The woods were growing up again. Now, when they cut down a tree, they planted two or three in its place. Their families were healthier, eating from the fruit trees they had planted and from the vegetable plots, filled again with the yams, cassava, pigeon peas, and sorghum that grew so well in Kenya. They had work to do, and the work brought them together as one, like the trees growing together on the newly wooded hills. The men saw what their wives, mothers, and daughters were doing, and admired them, and even joined in. Wangari gave seedlings to schools and taught the children how to make their own nurseries. 
Miss Sally taught in a pen school so long ago. They're different than the schools here in the United States, but at the same time, they're the same because they have teachers and wonderful children. She gave seedlings to inmates of prisons and even to soldiers. You hold your gun, she told the soldiers, but what are you protecting? The whole country is disappearing with the wind and water. You should hold the gun in your right hand and hold a seedling in your left hand. That's when you become a good soldier. And so, in the 30 years since Wangari began her movement, tree by tree, person by person, 30 million, 30 million, that is so many, Nietzsche Nino's friends, so many, 30 million trees have been planted in Kenya, and the planting has not stopped. When the soil is exposed, Wangari tells us, it is crying out for help. It is naked and needs to be clothed in its green dress. That is the nature of the land. It needs color. It needs its cloth of green. The end. And this has some information about Wangari Maathai. She was the first woman from Africa to receive the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004. Can you see now why Miss Sally loves this story? And really, Wangari is one of my heroes, or some might say sheroes. She's one of my sheroes. I love her so very much, and I admire her work that she has done not only for her country, but also for the whole world and the natural world. And you know what? This book teaches us that sometimes the ideas we have, even if they're small ideas, they can make a huge difference. So I wonder, I wonder what kinds of ideas you have, Nietzsche Ninos, that you can start right away to make and build and grow, just like Wangari, grow a better world, because we all can. All right. I shall see you again next week. Hasta la vista. Adios. Bye-bye. Ciao, Nature Niños friends. See you again.